Before we begin, here are a couple of important notes. Extrusion of multilamellar liposomal suspensions using polycarbonate membranes with a pore diameter of greater than 0.2 microns will not produce unilamellar liposomes. Liposomes produced from larger pore membranes will yield a polydispersed suspension of multilamellar liposomes. Unilamellar liposomal suspensions with a low polydispersity are only produced using polycarbonate membranes with a pore size less than or equal to 0.2 microns. Second, the polycarbonate membranes and filter supports are intended for a single-use liposome preparation and should not be reused. To begin the extrusion process, we must first prepare our dry lipid mixture by lyophilization or evaporation. Next, we will place our heating block on the hot plate, insert a thermometer into the well provided on the heating block, switch on the hot plate, and allow the hot plate in the heating block to reach the desired temperature. Next, we will hydrate our dry lipid mixture using a suitable buffer for at least 30 minutes. Always remember the lipid suspension should be kept above the phase transition temperature of the lipid during hydration and extrusion. As a quick tip, in order to increase the encapsulation efficiency of water soluble compounds, the lipid suspension may be subjected to three to five freeze thaw cycles by alternately placing the sample vial in a dry ice bath and warm water bath. Once the sample is fully hydrated, we will load it into one of our gas tight syringes. Carefully insert this gas tight syringe into one end of the extruder. As a quick tip, in order to reduce the dead volume, pre-wet the extruder parts by passing a syringe full of buffer through the extruder and then just discarding the buffer. Additionally, new syringes may have tight fitting parts, so to facilitate extrusion, it may be necessary to pre-wet the barrel and plunger with buffer prior to inserting the plunger into the barrel. Next, we will add our empty gas tight syringe to the other side of the mini extruder, making sure the plunger of the empty gas tight syringe is set to zero. This syringe will begin to fill automatically as the lipid is extruded through the membrane. Next, we need to check the temperature of our heating block. The temperature of the heating block must be below 80 degrees Celsius in order to prevent damage to the syringes. Looks like we're below 80 degrees. And now for the most important note, the extruder apparatus must be fully assembled prior to insertion into the heating block in order to prevent damage. Now we're ready to insert our fully assembled extruder apparatus into the heating block. Insert the hex nut so that any two opposing apexes fall within the vertical plane. Then use the swinging arm clips to secure the syringes into good thermal contact with the heating block. Allow the lipid suspension to equilibrate to the temperature of the heating block for approximately five to 10 minutes. To extrude, gently push the plunger of the filled syringe until the lipid solution is completely transferred to the alternate syringe. Then we will gently push the plunger of the alternate syringe until the lipid solution is completely transferred back to the original syringe. Repeat these two steps a minimum of four more times for a total of 10 passages through the membrane. In general, the more passages through the membrane, the more homogeneous the lipid suspension becomes. The final extrusion should end in the alternate syringe. This reduces the chances of contamination from forward material and large particles. The lipid solution should begin to clarify to form a slightly hazy, transparent solution. The haze is due to the light scatter of the residual large particles. These large particles may be removed by centrifugation to yield a clear suspension of SUVs. After the final extrusion, remove the extruder from the heating block. Remove the filled syringe and inject the lipid solution into a clean sample vial. As a very important note, when removing the syringes, be sure to pull them straight out of the mini extruder. Removing them at an angle could induce cracking of the syringes. Store your vesicle preparation above the phase transition temperature of the lipid during experimentation. When not in use, store the vesicle preparation at 4 degrees Celsius. Do not freeze. 
Vesicle preparations in aqueous media are generally not stable for more than three to four days, and storage of vesicle preparations above four degrees or at pH eight may reduce the lifetime of the vesicle preparation. Thank you so much for watching our mini extruder tutorial. We hope you found this information helpful. As always, if you have additional questions, don't hesitate to contact us at technical at avantilipids.com or visit us on the web at avantilipids.com.